now tuned into I Speak Geek. So today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. I am talking about the C1 and the C2. So these are the latest keyboards from Keychron. They are more of a budget friendly keyboard or the, the C1 is a tank keyless keyboard and the C2 is of course a full uh, keyboard with number pad. So I went ahead and of course updated these keyboards with different switches and also different keycaps. You know, it's a little bit of customization uh, going on here. And I, of course, I will leave those links below where you can find the keycaps. So I actually uh, use two different types of switches within these keyboards. Uh, the C2, I am using uh, the novel key Sherwoods and in uh, the C1, I am using uh, the Drop Ivory uh, Glorious Pandas, and also I am also using uh, the Cream uh, switches, now keys, Cream switches as well. Uh, these are a more linear uh, feeling type of switch, and of course, for me, whenever I'm working, I need a, a quiet keyboard, whereas the C2 uh, is my home keyboard and I can, you know, make a lot of noise. It's more of something for a typist because it has that clicky feeling. And I have to say the experience has been very similar. You know, they are essentially the same keyboard minus the, the number pad. And for those who are limited on space, definitely consider picking up the C2. It is still a great keyboard and I enjoy using it. So for me, I like, I'm flipping between the two because, you know, sometimes I, I, I want to use my clicky keyboard, but I found myself lately gravitating towards um, the uh, C1 just because of the, the feel of the, uh, the switches in there, the creams and the uh, Holy Pandas. It's just a nice feeling, especially when you're not trying to make too much noise in your office. Um, and the feeling of typing is just completely different. I went ahead and looped uh, both of these keyboards. Um, and, you know, it of course makes the feeling a little bit smoother. Whereas this one, uh, initially I only looped some of the keys and it kind of has this like scratchy feel where this has really that clicky feel. And I'll, I'll let you hear a little bit from them. And of course, that is blue. And then, of course, I'll let you hear the C1. I've also lubed all the switches. And of course, it has that more, you know, um, linear feel. And of course, you don't really hear a sound until uh, the key actually bottoms out and it's hitting the actual frame. And I found myself gravitating towards the C1 again. Um, There's just something about the way it feels typing. And when, of course, again, whenever you're not making uh, too much noise, it's a good, good switch to have in there. Um, you know, it's kind of in a rock and a hard place between the two because again, you have one that has a number pad and one that doesn't. And I think for those who have limited space and really don't need all those uh, other additional keys, you'll be fine using the C2. Whereas, you know, if you're somebody who does a lot with numbers, definitely think about picking up the, uh, the C1. And then of course, I would also suggest the hot swappable versions because they can always switch it out and make it your own. And that's what I decided to do. And of course, I'm gonna go ahead, do a short typing test, and um, I'll do a polling test just to make sure uh, you guys know what you're getting into. So, okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. So let's do a little bit of typing 
on this keyboard. This is C1. And it, I feel like I am growing to love the, the, typing seri uh, the typing experience on this particular keyboard, you know. You know, I find myself making less mistakes with this keyboard as opposed to something like the, the K1 V3 or uh, the K4 or the K2. Um, each of these keyboards I've had, and it's nothing like the C1 and C2. Uh, it's definitely a more pleasant typing experience. And just because of the layout, I think I make a lot less errors, even though as you're seeing right now, I'm making a ton of errors, but it's, I like the space of the keyboards. Um, even though it's plastic, you know, at first I, I felt like it was cheap, but I, you know, I like it, it has great angles. And um, I also made sure to include a polling test of the keys. Uh, I'll link the site that I ran it on, but I'll leave that uh, up in the corner uh, so you can see what the actual polling test was for these particular keys. So let's actually go ahead and switch to um, the C2. I'm pretty sure it's going to be more of the same, but like for me, because it is uh, using the novel Sherberts, you know, I, I like that loud noise, but like I said, this one is really growing on me and it's definitely a great feel. So you can't go wrong with either or, but I do suggest picking up the hot swappable one so you can put whatever switches you want in there and just you know pretty much make it your own and again i feel this one's like perfect for my desk because i have a small desk and this definitely gives me a, enough room and you know for those who like to travel with their keyboard i, I think this would also be a good travel keyboard as well um but as they grow in popularity, hopefully uh, they start opening up more options. So again, a similar type of experience, and I know I made a lot of errors here, but whenever I was using like the K1 or the K4, it was a lot more prevalent. I feel like the layout is a lot better. You know, it actually had been like the first time I've dealt with like compact keyboards and, you know, I just really didn't feel like the K2 or the K4 because it was so cramped. And whenever, you know, you're used to something for so long, just to have it, you know, bunched in, it it does take some getting used to. I mean, some people enjoy that, but I actually really enjoy the feel of the C2 and the C1. Um, definitely, if you're somebody who does a lot with numbers, um, you should probably go with the C1. If you're not and you're also limited on space, I would definitely suggest picking the C2 just because 
it is a nice keyboard, um, and especially with limited space, perfect layout. I can't say enough about it. And these are both like entry level keyboards, so you're not gonna spend too much money. I believe they're like 49 on uh, Keygrown site, but it's gonna cost you $20 uh, to the ship to the US or uh, whatever it is to ship to where you're at. So guys, thank you for watching. This is Jason, and you just tuned into I Speak Geek. Peace. I used to spend my evenings by myself, you know. Went through every number.